Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm at the Norwegian town of Holden, about 100 kilometers from Oslo. I've just come by train on this rather modern EMU, which I think is about to depart. It was a very scenic journey. Didn't seem to be any snow here. Once we got, you know, about half an hour into the journey, there just appeared to be no snow at all. So we've come fairly far south, well, 100 kilometers south. Seems to make a difference. So we've come to this town. We're gonna have a bit of a look around. There is a fortress here which I'll be able to point out in a moment up on the hill. That's the old station building, or possibly is the station building, which is really quite an attractive building. And it looks like that's possibly a good shed there. They make cables in this town. So that's, we went past the cable factory, that was quite exciting. There's a grand hotel here, and you can just see the fortress is up there. We're not too far from the Swedish border, but we're not gonna cross the border today. So as we come to down here, this is the end of the station. So the train I was on, it was going to Gothenburg in Sweden, but that's a video for another day. So, and that obviously is a bit of a harbour over there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wander into town and hopefully find my way up to the fortress. Well, here we are, we are sort of up at the fortress. My day's taken a slightly unexpected turn. I asked a local lady, which was the best way to walk to the fortress? And uh, she very kindly said, well, I live up there, I'll give you a lift. So I've just been given a lift, she dropped me off here. She explained to me there's actually three fortresses. There's one over there, which I'm not sure what there is to see so much. There's this one, and then the main one is over there. So my plan is let's go and have a look at this one, and we'll go and see the other one. So I'm gonna kind of discover all of this as I go. I was going to do the long walk up and show a bit of the town, my plan is now I'm going to show you the town as we go down. So I'll finish the video back down in the town centre. So you get a really nice view here, or a view of the surrounding area. There's a bit of a, a lake down there. Unfortunately it's a bit misty, but the town is down there. We should see a better view. As I mentioned earlier, we're not too far from the border with Sweden. I understand that the gist I've got with these forts is that they were built basically for, any, for, for past wars. Sweden. Have a look at this though. There's, this looks exciting. I wonder if that gate we can go in. It looks like we might be able to. Obviously, I can't see a padlock or anything. Let's see if this gate will open. Oh wow, yeah it does. It's exciting. Okay, I think we can go in there. Let's have a look. Oh look, it does tell you some information. I'll let you read this. Save me trying to explain it. So, now we know a bit more about the fort. That doesn't appear to go anywhere. Let's go in here and see what there is. These big old wooden doors. And here we are. We're inside. So, go up there by the looks of it. Let's go in here. What's in here? Oh, well, it's just a small little room. These are wine cellars, maybe, or not cellars as such, but where they stored wine, possibly beer. Let's have a look in this next one. We'll go into here. Okay. It's a bit like doing an urban exploration. Not really entirely sure if I'm supposed to be in here, but obviously I am. And then we shall um, we'll go in this one, and then we'll make our way up there and see what we can see up there. Okay, here it looks like here. They used to store various, I don't know, to store beer or food. It's quite cold in here. Very big, thick structures. So, um, now then, let's, let's go up here, up these steps. This looks exciting. This looks good. Always enjoy it when you can go up here. So we'll be able to see what the view's like. You can get a view of where we've just been inside. And what I'll do, when I've finished up here, we'll go and have a look at the rest of the fort. So yeah, that's the roof of that building. That's where we were, just down there. It's a shame it's so misty today. Is that golf course? There's a, that looks like a golf course over there. So we've got a golf course. And then we've got, oh, we can see down there a bit better. You can see that lake, right up part of a moat 
got ice on it. So as you see, there's no, not really any snow at all like there was over in Oslo. All the snow here's melted. But it's quite strange. It's like mysterious. There's hardly anyone about. It's just me. Like I said, I'm not entirely sure if I'm meant to be here, but I like it. There's like another fortress over there. So there's all, there's all these little hills with fortresses on. It's um, a strange place. All right, I think I need to get down. We'll go down to that lake now and then head up to the big fortress over there. So a moment ago, we were up there at the fortress, come down to that lake, as I said I would. You can clearly see it's got ice on it, so it's still, it's quite mild today, but it obviously has been very cold. I'm certainly not gonna to attempt to walk across the ice. This side of the lake doesn't have any ice at all. I do like this area, it's a bit just sort of different to anywhere I've been with the rocks and everything. It's, it's not like, um, I can't really describe it. When I was down in the town center, just having a look, I thought, and we'll have a look when we get down here, it reminded me a bit of Oban in Scotland, but up here, uh, this is just different to where I've been. I can see there's various buildings around, sort of in a strange kind of area. We're up high, but between two hills. But I'm gonna head up there now to the main fortress and just see what we can find. Oh, here we are, we're now on the edge of the fort. It's, uh, very, very foggy up here. And um, I was just talking to a local man. He just told me a bit more information about it. He said, um, that gentleman just there I was talking to, he told me that they have a big concert here. And down there is famous, because that's where Carl Tolton, that's the Swedish king, was shot. So um, I'll give you an idea of where we actually are, because I've just seen this picture of it in better weather. We're up here, you can see the, the concert. So we're gonna go down into there. We're gonna make our way up to this white bell tower. And now if we make our way down here and walk back down to the um, town centre. Yeah, there goes that friendly gentleman. So he, I'm glad he told me quite a bit. So he said, yeah, it's all 16th century fortress. It seems to be the main entrance to it. So there are museums and everything in here, which you can pay to go and see, being as it's winter, they're not open, I don't think. So we, we won't go in the actual museums, but we can see quite a lot. So if you have a look here, there are no fences provided. So basically, visitors are responsible for their own actions. So I don't think I'll be walking too close to the edge, but here we are. You see how thick the walls of this fortress are. They're pretty big. And uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take you up. Now I would say I'd take you up and see the views, but obviously the fog isn't exactly helping with that. You can see, let's yeah, say there's a museum down there. It's strange, it's just so sort of dead up here. Apart from that man, which I spoke to, there's just no one around. There's sort of the odd car park somewhere. There's a load of steps there. I think they're just going to take me up there. I want to go up to that white bell tower, which I think... So yeah, that, if I continue down here, it'll take me back out to the city. But if I go through here, we're still inside the castle. It's got quite a few of these sort of different courtyards and areas. Through here now. Uh, that looks more promising. So the steps going up. So this is the upper magazine. That sign just there tells me. It's so odd how dead it is and how there's no one around. Yeah, that will go down to the town centre. Let's go up here though. This looks better. More interesting to explore. It's um, a strange, strange place. Sometimes I go to places and they're so busy it's almost impossible to make a video. Well, here's the complete opposite, that there's literally no one around <laughs> anywhere. I do like how they just put a sign saying, warning, be careful, don't go near the edge in England. You just probably wouldn't be allowed to come up here or there'd be fences. So it makes it, you know, just let people be responsible for themselves, which is what tends to happen more on mainland Europe. Anyway, we're gaining height now above the roofs now, those buildings we were they seem to be disappearing quickly into the fog it's a shame because when i arrived here i looked up at the fortress and there was no fog at all and then the fog just descended out of nowhere it's a little bit windy i can see up ahead up there it's that bell tower just about to make that out get to here and Oh, the buildings like this. 
in here. <laughs> Not a lot. Just more empty rooms. So it's up, up here. Go up here. I'll go up the other side. I'm going to go back down into the town centre and get a cup of tea, I think. Seems in Norway you can get a decent cup of tea. Can't always get in Europe. This is looking very military. What if there was ah, the upper dragon bastion? So I'll just let you have a read of that. And then you go on to the top. So I think there's a, there would have been guns inside there. Oh yeah, look, you can see here where they would have had guns. And I think a moment ago, okay, yeah, so I mean about not going near the edge. Not a lot to, we were just down there. It doesn't look like much. And now I'm on the roof of that building I went in. I won't go any further there in case I can't get off the roof at that end. When we get to that bell tower and see what we can see there. It's so strange having the whole castle to myself, being the only person here. Very exciting. That's the bell tower. Just to make me make it out. It's a bit windy, so I hope you can hear me all right. At least I can, um, you know, raise my voice a bit without everyone looking at me, because sometimes you, you have to raise your voice because it's windy and everyone looks at you because they wonder what you're doing. Run down the hill. Oh, I could have, could have stayed on the roof and come down those steps. Anyway, so this is the Southern Curtain Wall. It says, it it, Southern Curtain Wall. I see some cannons over there. And up there is the bell tower. I assume at least that's the bell tower. Find out in a moment. Another bench with not much use at all. Yeah, that is the bell tower. And on top there's a weather vane, this is 1883. So I'm not too sure of the significance of 1883. Wow. It's uh, very, very foggy. A few cannons waiting to fire off. So seemingly nothing less. I'm kind of, yeah, up here in the clouds and there's no one else about. There's that bell tower and there's the cannon. I would, I was hoping to stand up here and point out the whole view but there's no point me doing that because I can't see any of it. I think what I need to do is find my way back down to the town centre. Well, a moment ago we were up there, I found a winding path zigzagging its way down and this is the best I can do for showing you the town. Not a lot, you might just be able to make out a few buildings down there. I'm going to make my way out of that gateway there and follow the zigzag path, which you probably can just about see, into the town. There's a field and everything down there. We can see that when we get down there, we might be able to look back up at the class. But here we are, we're just up in the clouds above um, this town in Norway called Holden. It's, it's nice, I like it here, but it's just a shame. It's sort of mysterious in one way and annoying in the other way that I can't show you the views. But anyway, my plan is to, as I said, make my way back down to the town. We are up there a moment ago, as I said, I was come out that gateway and we're just about to pass through another gateway on the steep path down. 1760 this one was built. I've seen various dates of building, some of them 16th century, some of them 17th century. Anyway, we come out here and the town is trying to reveal itself. What we got here, there's a few bits of interpretation. Oh look, this is funny, look. And quite often, getting Norwegian, understandably in English. But here, they've got it in Hungarian. So why is that? Ferenc, oh he's got a Hungarian name. Oh, he was a prince of Transylvania, historic part of the Kingdom of Hungary. Um, most of Transylvania is in now Romania. And he wanted support. Um, so, yeah, he wanted support because... Let's, let's get this right. When he rides back to Sweden from exile in the Ottoman Empire, he passed incognito through Hungary. In cities along his way, Nodjvarod. Now, Nodjvarod isn't in Hungary anymore. 
it's in Romania and it's known as Oradea. And I've been there, have a look at the ink on screen now. I'll show you around that city. Debritsen, been there as well on the same trip I went to Oradea. Pest, that's the other half of Budapest. And the Hungarians remember the legendary Swedish king and his extremely long ride. So that's quite cool. I like there being a Hungarian connection. I do speak a bit of Hungarian, I'm not going to read out that in Hungarian. If I did, I'd be, when I started this video, I'd have to say something like Jona Potkivarnok, Udruzielek, Halden, Norway one. They don't call it Norway, so I've forgotten what the Hungarians call Norway. But anyway, um, we're not in Hungary. But there's a nice little Hungarian connection there. And we can see a bit better. So this is the zigzag path. And you might just be able to see that is the harbour. I know it's not clear. There's a river through the town centre. It's a big white church as well. We'll go down there and have a proper look at it. Well, here we are. I'm back down in the town centre. The fortress is up there in the clouds. This is St Emmanuel's Church. This appears to be the local parish church. I did hope to go and have a look inside, but unfortunately it wasn't open. And then we get to here. I found the railway line again. I'm not going to wait for a train. There's also the river. I think it's the River Titsa. So I'm going to go over there. There's this more modern bridge, but there's an older bridge behind that. So we'll go over there and have a look at the river. We're still in the shadow of the cloudy fortress. We come to the river. And there's a really cool bridge. I've not seen a bridge quite like this one before, and I really like it. It's not that one. That's the modern bridge. And again, there's the railway line. There's the river. Look at that for a bridge. That is so cool. I like it. I've never seen quite anything of that design. I like the fact it's like a steel viaduct with a bridge sort of hovering above it. It's just, it's different and I like different things. Nice as a train came along, but as I said, I'm not sure when there's one next to you. Let's go and walk over the bridge and then we'll just see, you know, what we can see. So it seems the town is effectively split on each side of the river. So you've got the town centre down there. I can just see the harbour which is on one of the fields. And then um, if we have a look on this side, the railway line, which was single track, is just starting to go into double track. So that must be the beginning of the station complex. So might be able to see into the station if there's a train coming. I doubt there is. Oh, look, there's, that's cool. There's a spiral staircase down there. So we won't go down there. Right, I can see into the station. There isn't a great deal going on. And then on this side, we've got, got the railway line, the church and the fortress. And then that's looking upstream. This is, reminds me, this bit reminds me of Windsor. It's like Eton and Windsor, but it's, yeah, not. Although funny enough, it's about the same size as Windsor, this town, about 30,000 odd. And then there's the river. Right, I'm gonna go and get a coffee, I think. I'm, Getting a bit cold. Here I am under the bridge. I just walked over. It's funny. Um, it's very, people are very friendly in this town. And as I was on the bridge, someone had noticed me filming. Now they very politely just waited for me to stop filming, and they they said to me, I "See what you're doing. You're making a video." By the way, that's the older bridge. This is the new bridge. So I said, "Oh, thank you very much." So I just want to put that in there. So yeah, that's clearly a. 60s bridge. I just thought with the iron and everything it kind of had a old feeling but looking at it now I can see they're absolutely right. It's a modern bridge so yeah it's uh, usually I make these kind of mistakes and I don't know till it comes out in the comments so it's quite nice you know that people here are looking out for me. I think it is quite unusual to have an English person visit this town which is I'm really enjoying it here and I've you know I've been very welcomed here by the locals so you know I had a lady give me a lift up to the fortress and there was a man at the fortress saying everything's out someone pointed out about the bridge we can see where we are so that's the railway line that you can see the station that's the station building where we started so I'm just going to look down here so I'll just come back over the bridge I had a coffee in a little shopping centre on the other side of the river and the railway. Coming back towards the station, my plan is to finish the video down by the harbour, as already mentioned, but I've found something exciting for me. Found a big electric locomotive here with a train log, so I'm keeping an eye. There's a signal over there, it's red. I'm assuming there's a passenger train coming, so I'm either going to wait and watch it go, or if it's going to be a long time, I'm not going to wait. So it looks like, well, it's, it carries a number one, then 101. 
and then on the side I can see number 746 161 101 so I'll have to have a look up that look it up in my book and tick it off but I'm really pleased to see a proper loco hauled goods train So, a passenger train arrived from that direction, in the direction of Sweden. I went further up, expecting the goods train to go, but I stood in a position where I could see the red light. The red light didn't change, it stayed red, but the points changed in its favour. And I thought maybe there's a little ground signal I couldn't see. And then the loco starts powering up, and of course it reversed. It's shunted its wagons back there, so that didn't work. Anyway, back at the railway station again. As I said, my plan is to finish the video down by the harbour but I thought while we're here and we kind of got onto the subject of railways to make up for not seeing that go I'm going to show you a couple of things here there's the old railway goods shed here and um, it appears it's got some sort of local use now whether it's a community centre or something you can clearly see that's an old buffer stop oh that's interesting so oh, I'll just show you that um, so yeah it's clearly local community or something there's uh, well you mainly see the reflection but there's like a stage set up in there we're in the old goods shed. Oh, that loco is coming back. He's, he, I'm not sure what he's doing, but he's shunting wagons around. Um, he's just mucking me off, I think. What I was going to show you was in the middle of the goods shed, good yard, I found this, an old goods wagon. But I'm not going to show you that. I'm going to run over to the station. We're going to watch this freight train go through because I think that's what he's doing. Let's have a look and see this freight train. There you go. That was exciting. Uh, and there was a diesel on the back. It's funny when people complain about seeing a steam train with a diesel local on the back, but there was an electric train with diesel on the back. Anyway, well, I, was, I said I was going to show you a wagon that appears to be plinth here for, to make up for not seeing that go. And then it went, so you've got the best of both worlds. Um, it doesn't seem so exciting now seeing a plinth wagon. But anyway, back to what we were looking at the old goods shed, as I was saying. You can see the goods shed here, you can see the fortress up there, and there appears to be this old wagon, very old railway wagon, just parked here. And um, yeah, interesting to see. If it was an Ethan, it would be a steam engine, but I've only seen one steam engine on my trip to Norway, and that was at Technical Museum. Um, that's the only one I've seen. If you want to see that video, look at the link on screen now. There's a bicycle wheel. Yeah. Ah, that's a perfectly good bicycle wheel. Ooh. It's. Um, it's perfectly good, it's tyres are pumped up, seems a shame, it's left here, why someone left, left the bicycle wheel here? It's not the sort of thing you can exactly just lose. Anyway, so there's a randomly pl um, plinth wagon and a bicycle wheel. I'm going to head over there now, behind those flats are some silos, that's where the harbour is, that's where I'm going to go and finish the video. I've made my way through the flats and I've come to the harbour and this is where I'm going to finish today's video. I've had a great time here in Holden. It's a really nice town. It's a shame it was so foggy. It's not looking too bad up there now. See the fortress up there. So we've been all the way up there and it's been a good day. We've explored a fortress. It's nice to see some freight trains. The locals have been so helpful. It's quite funny how you know they've really helped me with this video. So it's been great and as I mentioned earlier it does remind me of Oban a little bit in Scotland. So 
this it's just sort of the way the harbour's here and then you've got well there's not a grain silo in Oban but and you haven't got quite the big ships which so just has that similar feel it's a similar sized town Oban's a bit bigger this is actually a fjord so this is technically the sea but it's a fjord so we're inland I mean you can say the same Fort William in Scotland that's on the sea it's at the end of Loch Liddy that's basically a fjord Scotland has fjords just on a much much smaller scale than the Norwegian fjords I'd like to go and explore them in a future visit to Norway but not this time anyway I've had a great time here thank you very much for watching please do feel free to like subscribe and comment I'm going to head back to the station and catch my train back to Oslo goodbye